Microsoft just dropped a ton of new announcements about Copilot Studio at Microsoft Build this week. If you haven't got time to go through it all, you know that's why you're here. I've got you covered. Let's have a look at the main things, what's important and why this matters to you as a maker. Now we're breaking this down into four epic sessions here. The first thing I've got two absolute game changers for you. We're then going to have a look at some things that really change the way that knowledge is being used in Copilot Studio, which is a really critical part of it. Some just really clever things, some relating to code. You don't need to be a coder to understand them. And this trend that we're seeing about being an agent boss, about collaborating with agents. And that's actually where this story starts and finishes, which is with the idea of multi agent orchestration. This is the single biggest concept that you need to get your head around and something that we've been really waiting for in Copilot Studio. So the idea is that you can build agents for every type of role or task or business process. But if you try to build them all into one agent, if you build one agent that's going to run your entire marketing department or your entire sales department or whatever, you're not setting it or yourself up for success. You have to think about agents in the same way as hiring a team of people where each agent has a particular function or a particular role to play. And this is this idea of multi-agent orchestration that each agent has its own domain knowledge and hands over to the other one. And the reason for this is that when we're getting AI to reason over things and decide like increasingly the way that we can build these agents is that they use the AI to decide what to do. You say, here's the knowledge I'm giving you. Here are the tools I'm giving you to take action. And here is the remit that you have, your job that you have, and you figure out how to do it. You are going to be more successful if it is a very domain specific agent with a very defined set of knowledge and a defined set of tools. And it has got that job sorted and it knows that it can hand off to that other agent who also has its own separate domain knowledge and skills to do those things. So as we design agents now and work in Copilot Studio, we are designing multi-agent orchestration, multi-agent systems. You'll see here that you can choose how you want to extend by connecting an existing agent from Copilot Studio. So you build lots of agents in Copilot Studio and connect them together or an agent in Microsoft Fabric or one from Azure AI, so ProCode, LowCode, best friends as always, uh, from the Microsoft 365 SDK. There's also coming through this idea of what's called an agent to agent protocol, which means in due course very soon, you'll be able to connect to agents built on other platforms. So this doesn't even have to be a Microsoft to Microsoft agent. Second half of 2025, it's going to be all about this I've got plenty more coming on this stuff. So stay tuned for that. And so the second big announcement here is Copilot Tuning. Now this is related to the main Microsoft 365 Copilot, but that's best friends with Copilot Studio because of course that's the tool set that we use to do all of the things where we want to extend Microsoft 365 Copilot. So it totally counts in this video, my rules. <laughs> so what you can do with this is actually start to use your enterprise data, your organizational data to tune that model in Microsoft 365 Copilot. So part of the core way that this was rolled out to start with is it doesn't train the model on your data, but actually in a lot of cases we want that. I want this to be something that understands the way that we put our language together in the organization and the knowledge we have in the organization. And as I generate things, I want it to be informed by that and use that. Now this is all still built within the security of your tenant and the security of the documents you're using. This is still the absolute core value of this Microsoft 365 Copilot and using AI at work is you're bringing the AI into your secure environment, you're not taking your stuff out. So this applies here as well. So as we go forward with these models that you can train and you can train it to do things like document generation and say, please, work according to our style guide. This is a thing I've seen a lot of people ask for. And then you can point it to those sources and say, please train on this model and please respond using that very straightforward sort of click and point wizard style interface to do this. So even though we're talking about training models, we're not into data science here. 
So you will be able to use Microsoft 365 Copilot to do those things in your organization, like using your style code and using your voice and sounding like you as an organization, which is amazing. Now, knowledge is at the heart of all of this. That's an idea of using knowledge to train the models. And Copilot Studio, one of the core starting points is where do you want to add knowledge from? Do you want to point it to a website, point it to your SharePoint? So you can create these agents that reason over and find knowledge. There's a stack of new features. There's a big investment area from Microsoft is in improving and tweaking what's going on with knowledge. Tweaking is probably not a strong enough word. So let me take you through the things here that are kind of the headline points, but there's a lot more depth under this, which we will continue to explore. So it's two categories here. The first one is new controls over knowledge, so much more granular control. So we've had for a while the ability to upload files. Now you can upload files kind of into a collection of files into a folder and then sort of use all of those as one combined knowledge source together, which is really good. You don't necessarily always want to put things on SharePoint. The whole experience even of how it returns the answers and shows you the citation in those uploaded documents is way better than it was. So check that out if you haven't seen it for a while. I also love this new UI because now look at this. We've got here's the name and the description. Now, descriptions are super, super important when we're talking about what's called generative orchestration what I was saying earlier about allowing the AI to determine which things it should use and what it should use to answer questions, these descriptions are absolutely core to that. So the, that was kind of hidden away in a box that was sort of always running off the end of the screen and hard to type in. I am beyond delighted. I mean, it's not a headline announcement, but believe me, the description box is nice and front and center there and easy to work with. It's important. This is good. But the other thing is knowledge instructions preview. You can start to say this is when you should use this knowledge source. So this idea of putting all of these natural language descriptions and instructions onto these things is absolutely how you get an effective agent and building in natural language. So the skill of describing things, not a highly technical skill, but a highly valuable skill as we bring these things together. What else is here? We've also got support for OneDrive. We've got support for even more types of granular ways of doing this with knowledge. So this is another example here of being able to put instructions against that knowledge. So this is where we're giving the large language model instructions to say, make sure you always use these things to answer the question. So this granular control of really being able to direct it much more so that when the AI looks around and goes, what should I use? What should I do? You've really given it those guardrails and guidelines. There is also something, I don't have a screenshot of it from the, from the launch, but you can actually choose your own model for a particular knowledge source. So if you've got something that needs a, a deeper reasoning model or a more complex model than the standard thing, that's another big part of what's coming in to all of this is that sort of granular control over the models and the instructions that are, that are being used. We can also have more control over sort of the way the responses come back too. So again, you could sort of always put this in the instructions, be polite, friendly, answer in a certain way. But I'm loving this little sliding scale. How long or short should responses be? Medium. <laughs> you can slide up and down the scale. And here again, choosing the model that you want to use to, to respond and the way that you want to do respond. So sort of breaking that part out into an explicit set of instructions about the style of the responses rather than packing it all into these tiny boxes or instructions, how we, how we used to do those things. You might notice code interpreter for your agent. We're going to come back to that one in the clever things section. Stay tuned for that. The other part of the knowledge here is additional knowledge types. So the idea now is that wherever your knowledge is, you can connect to it with Copilot Studio. So there's a lot more things in here. It wasn't on the screen, but it is in the announcement post that Teams chats and things you can use. A couple of other big call outs here, SharePoint lists. <laughs> That's what everyone has been missing. I know a lot of people use SharePoint lists for things, so you'd be able to connect SharePoint lists. We have also got Dynamics 365, the finance and operations side of Dynamics 365 popping in there now. 
Confluence is another one. I know a lot of you have asked about Confluence on the channel here. So there you go. There it is at the top of the list, as well as a lot of those other enterprise systems. So this is just really expanding the ability to do that. You are not locked in only to the Microsoft sources. You can go wherever you need to go. So a huge new improvement in the knowledge sources. Plus this one here that sort of didn't hit the main stage, but just appeared in the last few days, web search. So when you first set up your knowledge, one of the toggles you've got is, do you want to allow the AI to use its own general knowledge, which is just using the large language model to answer in the same way as if you go to chat GPT and just ask something. Generally, if you are creating an agent and grounding it in your knowledge, you want it to only answer from that and not necessarily use the general knowledge of the model. But we've got this other option now, which is web search. Like, do you want it to actually have that experience? And you will have seen this if you use those consumer AI tools where it's answering using the model and the web search. So now you could build an agent here that uses whatever combination of these things you want. Your knowledge, the general knowledge of the model, web search knowledge. So we've got all of those pieces in play, <laughs> which is delightful. One other little thing I'm sleep, sleeping, sneaking, sneaking. Oh, my brain is tired. It's a lot. One other thing I'm sneaking in here, published to SharePoint. Now this is kind of in the knowledge zone. Go with me. It's a good way to categorize it. So this idea of being able to build an agent and publish it onto a SharePoint site where you have a lot of your knowledge. Go with me. It's okay. So we've had the ability before to sort of go into SharePoint and create agents from there, but this means you can create these custom agents and connect it to lots of different things. And there will be that channel in there to say, connect to SharePoint, and then you can just deploy it there. So these ways of making it very easy to connect into those Microsoft channels, Teams, Microsoft 365 Copilot, and now SharePoint, we can build agents in Copilot Studio for those things. Don't forget, we also use this for external agents. Lots of high value use cases there too. Don't just get stuck on the internal things, but this is good. And speaking of which, WhatsApp is coming as a channel in July. Bonus point in there. All right, let's look at some clever things. These are some Cody things, but don't run away if you're not a Cody person. We're, it's going to be okay. Code interpreter. Easiest way to understand this is if you've used, and if you haven't used, you should use, and let me know if you'd like to see a video on this. Actually, I'm going to do a video on this anyway. This is one of my favorite new things. Copilot in Excel has a button that says advanced reasoning, and it goes away and does all of this Python for you. It effectively writes code and puts in an analytical you know, set of data and interprets it for you. If you uh, have seen the new analyst agent that's coming through in Microsoft 365 Copilot, same kind of concept. So what these models are doing is generating Python to be able to do sort of advanced reasoning. And this unlocks reporting and analytics. So this is something we haven't really been able to do with Copilot Studio before. People often say, I want, to, I want it to analyze this or analyze that. So this code interpreter, this Python allows you to do this. And so now you'll be able to build in Copilot Studio these experiences where the agent can actually run this Python and, and spit out these kinds of reports, very similar to the kind of experience we see built into Excel or those analyst agents. So that tech is, is coming through there in a way. So that's going to be under that banner of code interpreter. The next thing here, now this one is really only if you are a code person, but um, that's okay. Visual Studio extension. So basically this means now if you are wanting to work in this interface instead of the low code drag and drop, you're good. This is important to me because I've spent a lot of time before I did this stuff doing power apps. I did a lot of power apps is a, you know, it's a low code tool. And if you're someone like me who comes at it from a business user, or a low code side of the world, you like, this makes enormous sense. And then you talk to people who are professional developers and they're like, but, but why can't I just go into visual studio and do it? And, and their brains are trained to think this way. I love that now the value of Copilot Studio allows for both kinds of makers. So if you're coming at it from a code first point of view, you can absolutely do that, but you're getting all the benefits of working with Copilot Studio as a SaaS platform with all that infrastructure taken care of, but you just want to do the authoring part in code instead of with the low code tool. 
that's what this one is going to let you do. And this one probably belongs in the top line announcements, but I've put it down a bit further here because at the moment it is only very limitedly available. It's only available to sort of the biggest customers in the States. I'm hoping that's just the starting point and it will roll out. So this is one to watch unless you're at a massive organization in the US right now. This is like RPA, Robotic Process Automation, but with an agent. So robotic process automation is a way of connecting to systems where you can't plug in with that API at the back end. You can't actually do an integration. You have to basically repeat the keystrokes of what the person is doing on the screen and record that and play it back. So that's what that does. Computer use inside the agent here is essentially doing that. So if you want to have an agent that goes to a website and does some clicks or searches or whatever or connects to an application that's an on-prem application or something that you can't otherwise plug into, this is going to be the answer to that. And it's clever enough that even if the interface changes and things move around the screen, it gets it. So this is actually mind-blowingly good. It's just that it's not going to be available to most of us for a little while yet. So be aware of it, be excited about it, but be get your hands on with all the other things that you can <laughs> get your hands on, unless you're one of the lucky people in an organization that's getting this one to start with. All right, so let's go back to where we started the story here, which is this idea of multi-agent orchestration. And the phrase agent boss comes from uh, a couple of weeks ago, Microsoft released a report on the future of work. And the idea here is that as we go forward, we all as information workers become, I hire my own team of digital agents, basically. And I work with those to do the processes and we hand off, I'm handing off work to them, they're handing off work to each other. And so there's two really cool things here. This one you might miss if you're looking just at the Copilot Studio stuff. And I am sneaking this in because it is important in terms of the agent experience even though strictly speaking, this is this is actually in Power Apps, but we're in the Power Platform world here, is the idea of this agent feed. So it's just like the activity feed a little bit, but what's happening here is that if you are working with agents and collaborating with agents in your business processes, you kind of need to know what's going on. You need to have a checkpoint of where have they got stuck? Where do they need to escalate something to me? What next action should they be taking? So this idea of having this agent feed to go, here are the things that are coming up. Here are the things where the agent can't do something and they need to click through to do it. And the idea is I click through and it opens that part of the application. This is all built in Power Apps. And then this piece down the side here persists with me as I work through the application, giving me what's happened, what's happening next. So this essentially becomes the agent version of that next best actions thing, which as makers we can configure to put in these applications. So this is kind of bringing that agent experience into the low code maker experience there. This is something that we saw announced and removed from Microsoft 365 Copilot a while ago. And it's nice to see it sort of popping back up in here to be able to sort of create an action and say, actually, here is a email reminder I need to do. I can click on it from here. So we've got this idea of sort of these agent experiences and agent feeds coming in through those applications we can build. So Copilot Studio and Power Automate have always been best friends. I think Power Apps is coming in and getting a little bit of love here as well, which is good. And then agents calling agents. So again, right back to the start where we were designing, remember we're designing those multi-agent orchestrated systems where I'm building a Copilot Studio agent, but it's calling another Copilot Studio agent that is expert in something else. So as I'm building those things, I'm designing it that way to be able to do that. Inside Microsoft 365 Copilot, if you're working with those agents that have just been built for you or that you've built in your everyday work, your HR policy agent or your, you know, any of those things that are in there, you need to either switch to them at the moment or at mention them. If you didn't know you could do that, have a go at it at mention them to call them. So the thing that's coming through here in this sort of like a refreshed, improved experience is very much about saying that it is going to suggest, hey, there's another agent that can help with that. So I'm using Copilot as my 
UI here and I'm just interacting with it and in the middle of the conversation it's like oh actually the co-pilot goes the work the workforce workplace analytics agent is going to be better placed to answer that so how about we hand off to there now this part is all part of this new experience this wave 2 co-pilot Microsoft 365 co-pilot experience which is honestly the biggest update that we've had other announcement here at Build is that that is now generally available and starting to roll out. If you want to know what's going on with all of this, I'll see you over in this other video there where I take you all the way through it. Thanks for watching.